Hey guys, welcome to another week of Wow Weekly with Mist. And for this week, we have Battlegrounds will be the weekly. Uh, there's also going to be the PvP brawl that is the Shadow Pawn showdown. And of course, the highlight is the Wow anniversary for the 17th year. This anniversary will run from November 15th, so it does start today, and it will run all the way till December 6th. This on screen here is a list of mainly old items that you've been able to get from previous years. You will still be able to get them this year, so that's a good one if you missed out on any of that stuff from previous years. We also will have the return of Korax Revenge. It's not going to be as great as the first year we had it. Uh, the first year it was a uh, exceptional leveling experience. The honestly the best leveling I've ever seen in the game. But they nerfed that during the last anniversary, so we will not see that type of leveling in it, but it does still give you a chance to get your hands on the Alliance and Horde mounts from there, which is the Stormpike Battle Ram and the Frost Wolf Snarler. These mounts are pretty cool, so if you are a mount collector, you probably will want to get your hands on them. So that covers the old stuff that you can catch up on if you didn't get a chance. Now for the new items. The first new item, and the one most people are probably going to be after, is of course the Illidari Doomhawk mount. So this is the mount here on screen, and it is a low drop rate. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't do this in the WoW anniversary. Usually the mounts during the anniversary events are fairly easy to get, but it does seem like they are pulling a uh, love is in the air thing, so this would not be the first one that has a short-timed event that only pops up yearly where it's a low drop rate. So the Illidari Doomhawk is a 1% chance. However, the good part of this is you don't have to be 60 to loot it, so you can do this on any character that is at least level 30. Uh, it looks like it's a daily lockout Honestly, best way to treat this mount is to act like you're farming the love rocket because it's going to work the same way. If you don't get it when the event ends, you're not completely screwed, but you will have to wait another year. So this isn't a 1% mount that's like vanishing. You just would have to wait till next year to try again. If my previous chart of all those old items showed anything, it's that nothing's unique you know, like, yeah, uh, a lot of us thought those uh, Korak mounts were going away, you know, because nothing had really stayed yet at that point. And, uh, and they've been able to be farmed for the past three years now. So yeah, if you don't get your hands on this mount this year, don't worry, you're not completely screwed. Um, hopefully you do get it, but if you don't, you can always try again in the next WoW anniversary. You have my attention. And another thing worth noting, and this one's a weird one to put in, but it cannot be traded. So if your friend, I, I, I don't know who would be lucky enough to loot too, but if your friend was to loot an extra, they cannot give it to you. It is a non-tradable mount. So this may be a good time to dig up all your alts. You may want to use them to get as many attempts in as you can with this mount. And yeah, so all your characters 30 plus can go for that. There's also the Akama's Edge Axe. Now this one is just the one that's like highly promoted, but there's a lot of different gear you can get uh, off of Doomwalker. Here's a list of all of the gear. You can see there's like four new items. The cool part of this is they will all be item level 226. So it's a good way to catch up your alts that are level 60 uh, and get their item level up there with some weapons and armor pieces. 
There is also the Timeless Mechanical Dragonling that can just be purchased with Time Warp badges, uh, 200 of them. And also on screen here, you do see a toy that will be available as well. So the toy does drop off of Doomwalker. It doesn't seem to be too bad of a drop rate. Uh, I'm, I'm putting this part in, you know, right as it's been kind of released. And people are already mentioning that they've got it. And the attempts seem to be anywhere from like you know, first attempt to 10th attempt. So yeah, if you have alts, that's going to be a pretty easy grind for the toy. Now the mount will, of course, be a whole different story and the gear is pretty much going to be the easiest thing you'll loot. So you'll mainly be continuing to farm that for the mount. I think you will definitely have the toy and, you know, some of the loot you might need within that first week. Um, but the, the mount might be a different story. You may need, you know, most of the full duration of this event to get the mount, depending on your luck, of course. And then the final piece of info you'll need for this is how do you get to Doomwalker to be able to get these items? So you'll head to your main city, take the portal that uh, brings you to Caverns of Time, and this is going to put you right where Doomwalker is standing. So very easy to get to him. And just one thing I thought I'd add that's beneficial to people who maybe don't bother with time walking events is that Doomwalker, to kill him, is actually a weekly quest. And you get 150 time warp badges from that. So if you are a person that avoids all that stuff, but you need those badges to buy the pet and some other stuff, that is one way to ensure you get those items before the end of the event. And that quest will be called Doom Walkin' Has Come Knockin'. Now, at the time of mentioning this weekly quest, uh, there's no info on it, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, it, even when you go search it, it's people last year talking about how the quest didn't exist, right? So probably something Blizzard, you know, decided they wanted to put in a year later. So there is no actual info on where it is, however, by the time this video posts, you guys will probably know. But in case I post this video early, it really depends on when I get it done. Um, my guess is it would be Caverns of Time is where you would get it. A lot of the event stuff happens over in Caverns of Time and also Doomwalkers over there. So yeah, if you hop in and there's still no known info, I would hit up Caverns of Time first, and yeah, it's probably right there. So that covers the weekly events for retail. As far as goals and accomplishments, I, I told you guys that I probably wouldn't be back till the anniversary event. The anniversary event is here, and I am ready to... Well, it's not really a return. I never left WoW, but I was a little more not really main content focused, we'll say. I was just putzing around and this past week, actually, I was doing, you know, quite a few islands and I was actually choosing WoW over Animal Crossing. So I think we're ready. I think we're ready to, you know, bring more WoW streams back and be a little more WoW focused again and and yeah, and this anniversary definitely helps with that. However, Islands, for whatever weird reason, has helped with that too. I've been having a lot of fun in there. So on that topic, my one and only accomplishment this week had to do with Islands. Back in BFA, I farmed the shit out of this place. And because of that, I was able to buy the Siltwing Albatross. Uh, for a thousand. So that was done in BFA. I got that mount back then. And that kind of left me kind of broke. So 
I decided to start grinding some more uh, doubloons to get the next mount, and I was able to actually purchase it this week. So I got back to a 500 amount, and I purchased the Saltwater Seahorse, which was the second vendor mount on there, and the last vendor mount on there. So there's still more mounts I need, but they're not direct purchases. My next focus here is the rest of the stuff. So if I mouse over this vendor, you can kind of see that I still need some transmog pieces and battle pets and toys. Yeah. It took so much work just to get that one mount for a thousand last expansion that I just never got all the rest of the items. So I'm going to work on that. I, If I remember right, I calculated it all together and it, it equals around 1,300 doubloons. So it's going to be quite the farm. But once I'm done with that, then I can start buying those caches. I don't want to pay for them while I have to buy these things off the vendor because the reality is while I'm farming this stuff, I could easily loot one of those mounts that are from the cache or a pet or whatnot. Although there's only like two pets I'm missing. So that's been my focus. If anyone wants to do some PvP islands tonight, let me know because it's there's like two out of the three up there for this week that I actually need for my PvP count. And it's been a little tough finding a group this week. Granted, I haven't like searched super hard. I'm honestly kind of kicking myself in the ass right now because like... PvP Islands was what I was focusing at the end of BFA because I wanted to get my PvP Islands achievement. And I was so close. I was so close. I was only missing a few. And uh, and then, you know, I, I was getting sick of Islands and, you know, I, I just kind of stopped doing them. And I knew, I, I knew, like, the whole reason I focused it at the end of BFA was because I knew when Shadowlands came, it was going to be nearly impossible to find people that want to do that. And, like, yeah, I've got guildies I can call upon to, you know, do that, but I don't want to always rely on them, right? I just wish that you could, you know, queue a little easier with people. Every time I look at the pre-mades, no one's looking for PvP islands. So... You know, eventually I'll probably, you know, get my guildies to help me out with the rest of this achievement. But for now, if any of you guys are interested, um, this, you know, tonight is one of the batches I'm interested in because it is a week where two of the three are what I need for my PvP count. So... Yeah, I can't say I'd be interested next week. It really just depends on what that week's islands are, because I, I just do it for the count, and then the rest I can easily solo in PvE for, like, you know, items, right? So yeah, let me know. There's the Discord link um, on the main page and in the description if you're interested, and I do typically post when I'm gonna do some stuff over there. So that has been kind of what I'm working on. Of course, the goals for this week is gonna be to loot the Doomhawk mount. Luckily, I don't think it's absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, if I if I loot it, cool. If I don't, I'll, I'll still be a little upset because I'm a collector, right? But at the same time, at least it's not like the Love Rocket. The Love Rocket, I actually like, you know? I actually really like the model of that one. And yes, I know they changed the name. It's always going to be the Love Rocket to me. So, you know. I don't care what the new name is. That is my goal. Um, some loot would be nice, but I'm sitting in 226 gear at minimum. So, you know, not a huge deal. Like, I'm not too concerned if I loot gear, yay. If I don't, whatever. Like, not a big deal. Um, but I do want that pet. And the pet, I actually I have enough already. So, you know, the pet's cheap right it's like 200 time walking badges so um so yeah that one will be easy it's really just gonna be the mount that is the true farm 
So I wish you guys good luck on that mount. And, uh, and hopefully I will get it. And I will also be doing a stream tomorrow. So I'm kind of secretly hoping I don't loot it today. I just use up some of my chances that I need to use up to loot it, you know? If that makes sense to anyone, I'd rather loot it on stream. So we will have a WoW stream tomorrow. And uh, and yeah, so that covers events for the week and my goals and accomplishments. So let's get to some news. So the first piece of news I have has to do with the port to Desmataron. And, and I think I pronounce that word differently every single time I say it, but that is besides the point. Just a quick reminder that you do need to have the Sanctum of Domination achievement on one character at minimum to be able to access these ports. That achievement's super easy. You can just go do LFR. Like it's not saying, that achievement doesn't say specifically that you gotta do normal, heroic, or well, it would never say mythic. That would be asking a lot. But you know, it's any difficulty. So you could just run through LFR and that would be an easy way to get it if you don't have it. And once at least one of your characters has that, all your characters will be able to use the port. So, so yeah, if you're wondering why you can't use it, that is why right there. Next up in news is this cute little murloc. So I did a video on this uh, just a couple of days ago. Actually, it was yesterday. Yeah. So I did a video on this just yesterday. So I will link that at the end of this video and you can go get your cute little murloc. The quests for this was so easy. It'll only take you upwards to like maybe 30 minutes. I would say between 20 to 30 minutes of work and you have the pet. And the nice part of this quest line was that it's all in the same area. So you know, once you get to your destination, you're just in that destination the whole time until you're on the last part where you go back to the city and hand in. So that's really nice. There's minimal travel. Okay, so the next quite a bit of pieces of news is going to have to do with the 9.2. So the 9.2 kind of got like a mini reveal. I wouldn't consider it a full-blown reveal video. But they did put a video out. I did do a video on this. So also at the end of this video will be that one linked as well where we watched it together. And then I kind of gave my opinion at the end. So after watching that, a couple more pieces of news kind of came out. One was that there's going to be some solo shuffle for the PvP brawls for 9.2. I believe this is to kind of test the water, more or less. Um, a lot of people have been wanting, like, a solo queue for arenas and stuff, and this is kind of one way to test how that might go. So test it on a function that maybe gets played a little less. So hopefully that goes well. Another thing we learned is that we're going to be able to equip two legendaries at the same time in 9.2. So basically how this is going to work is this is something you unlock in the new zone. So this is going to be one of the reasons you would need to play the new zone. And once it's unlocked, it's account-wide. So all your characters will be able to um, have two legendaries on them. Shortly after they made that reveal trailer, they announced level 60 boost. So if you do go to your Battle.net app or in-game or whatever, wherever you buy your boost, uh, you will see it turn from a level 50 boost to a level 60 boost now. Also, we got kind of a glimpse of the new raid. So the new raid is the Sepultura of the first ones. And... What we do know so far is that the first week of the release, it, it won't be open. And that's a given. None of the raids ever open on the first week. The second week, it'll open with normal and heroic. And the first eight bosses will be available. There is a total of 11. So they're doing this 
for story hype. They want to get some of the story out there before you're able to fight the final bosses. So week three, you'll have access to all your bosses on all difficulties. Uh, well, when I say all, I mean like actual raid difficulties. So normal, heroic, and mythic. LFR will slowly get into the picture there. Um, but LFR is like, to me, LFR has always been kind of like queuing up for a dungeon or something. I've never considered it raid, you know? But, but it is, I guess, technically, it is looking for a raid. So the first wing on that will be on the third week. And just for those that maybe are wondering why I don't consider it a raid, it's not that you can easily queue into it. It's that it's usually lacking all the major mechanics. So it's basically a raid without mechanics, which in my eyes just isn't a raid, <laughs> you know? So, so that's why. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the fact that it's easier to find people or anything like that. Also worth noting that no more renown levels are being added. So we are at the max that Shadowlands will offer. With the new zone, which we're going to talk on in a minute here, uh, you will gain access to some new powers. So the new zone is called Zareth Mortis. It's going to have a progression system that's called Ciphers of the First One. It has seven stages of content. And with that comes some new world quests and daily quests. You'll also unlock the ability to equip your two legendaries, of course, and the ability to craft tier sets. I do think the crafting tier sets is a really good one. With the ciphers of the first ones, you will learn how to translate a unique language. And that's pretty much all I can really tell you. That's all we really know. So yeah, it's, yeah, that's pretty much it there. To be honest, it sounds a lot like a Corthia part two to me. On the topic of flying in Zareth Mortis, um, there's not a whole lot of info on this quite yet. It's really early stages, but it has been confirmed that flying will be unlockable in Zareth. So definitely you're not going to be able to fly right away, but it is going to be able to be unlockable throughout your path. The last time we unlocked flying, they decided to, you know, take out the pathfinder and put it be behind a quest line. Uh, it might be like that. Hopefully not as long, because honestly, I I was laughing my ass off when they did that, because the time frame of the past expansions where you had to grind for Pathfinder was shorter than the quest line, because they delayed content so bad in Shadowlands that it didn't even feel quicker. It felt like you did Pathfinder quicker than the past years than the quest line. So hopefully if they're going to do like a quest line thing again, you know, the content isn't so delayed that it feels like we're doing a Pathfinder. And on that note, here is a quick glance at some of the mounts you will be able to get in the new zone. Um, sources are undetermined right now, but... But those are some of them. And honestly, I would bet you anything that's not all of them. They, they only showed us a little bit. Uh, yeah, as far as things to do out there, it seemed pretty minimal. So usually if something seems minimal, it means that they're going to, you know, fill the void with pets and toys and mounts. And so realistically, we should see a lot of collector type stuff. And speaking of pets, here is also a few pets that we did see in the 9.2 reveal. Once again, there'll be many more added to this list. This is just what we know of at the moment. Okay, so on screen we have some hot fixes from November 10th involving PvP, quests, Threads of Fate, 
and some classic. Also, November 11th hot fixes, which includes some class changes, uh, dungeons and raid changes, and more specifically, the Encyclopedia of Sinstone Fragment Recovery, which is um, bind on account now. Also, uh, one thing that just kind of popped up on my battle net as I was editing this, so I figured I would add it in, is maybe this past week you have noticed some of your games constantly updating. I have definitely noticed it, and I've had friends notice it as well. And finally, on the battle net, they say they're working on a fix, so hopefully maybe today that will be fixed. Uh, I'm surprised that they're just now realizing it's been an issue. I've, uh, I've noticed it for at least the past few days. So, you know, just thought I'd add that, that hopefully that will be fixed. And if that is happening to you, Blizzard is fully aware of it. It, it is, uh, it's not just you, it's everyone. Okay, so... The last bit of news has to do with Classic WoW. Uh, this is something I've been looking forward to, so I fully intend on being a part of this. So in Classic WoW, they've got the Season of Mastery. So basically, for those wondering what the Season of Mastery is, is it's like it's basically like a 12-month competition. All players will begin fresh at level one on a brand new server. It's specific to Season of Mastery. And so everyone starts out the same. You'll have no gold. So there is a hardcore mechanic here. And this is the number one feature that I am interested in. Uh, as a person who has played hardcore Diablo, I always kind of wanted... WoW to have a function in the game, and what better than Classic WoW to have it? Because you can't do that in retail, right? Retail's so fucking easy. Someone can hit you 20 billion times. Meanwhile, you've got some, you know, you, you got some random ability that you probably don't even realize is healing you. You know, like, yeah, it's just much better done in Classic WoW, and it's the only place they could truly do it. To play the hardcore mode of this, it'll be called Soul of Iron. So basically, if you've never died on the character, you can ask to receive the Soul of Iron buff. If you accept the challenge, you will receive a new spell in your spell book. It's called Soul of Iron, which is like a, a slash flux emote that turns you to stone. If you don't die when you mouse over the Soul Iron buff, you'll see a message saying, Never known defeat. And dying with the buff will give you Tarnish Soul debuff. And your Soul of Iron will, like, physically spit out of your corpse. And... <laughs> And the Tarnished Soul debuff reduces all your stats by 1% and dying additional times uh, doesn't increase that. So you can return back to the Chronicles, which is in the city. So for Alliance, you're going to the Library and Ironforge. And for Horde, you're going to go to the Apo Apothecarium. I, I've, I always say that word wrong, so I'm not sure if I said that right. But the Apothecarium in Undercity. And they'll be called Chronicle. So the Alliance one's called Chronicle Furo, and the Horde is called Chronicle Morda. So a while back, we did kind of like see some achievements appear for this mode. So I'm not totally sure if they ever did actually confirm this, but we'll know real soon because it's, you know, this all releases on Tuesday. So there, there's this that you see on screen. These are possible achievements. On screen here, you can see some dungeon changes that will be in effect for this. There's been some crafting material increases as well. So Black Lotus is going to drop from like higher level nodes. Uh, Plague Bloom is going to become more available, and your Elemental Fire, Earth, and Air is going to be more available as well. Uh, as far as honor rates go, 
Uh, your rate factor for your weekly honors increased from 20 to 40 percent. And also, this is the phases. So in phase one, two, three, four, five, and six, and all those, um, all those content releases that go with it. Of course, we only know the date for, you know, season of mastery releasing. So the rest is to be determined, but those content release unlocks won't change. So they, they will be what unlocks there for sure. So yeah, I thought I would just mention that. I went and reserved my name this past week. So I um so I got my miss name over on one of the servers and yeah, so I'm just going to kind of juggle this and the anniversary event cuz I'm you know, I I've, I've been waiting. I've always done those hardcore challenges like Iron Man and stuff. I've I've always been really interested in them. And, and I think retail has made me more interested because I spend years not dying. Like, unless I go into a raid or a Mythic Plus, I'm pretty much unkillable, you know, or PvP, of course, you know, because like everyone dies in PvP. Retail getting easier has made me want a hardcore mode that much more because things are just so easy now and I just want to be able to challenge my character. And honestly, what better than a druid in classic WoW? <laughs> Druids are pretty squishy over there. And yeah, so so yeah, I'm I'm very excited for that. And it's nice to like see everyone starting fresh together. I really like that aspect. So yeah, super, super hyped. Honestly, if it wasn't for the Soul of Iron debuff, I probably wouldn't have really had interest in the Season of Mastery. But because they've brought a hardcore challenge into play, yeah, I am all over that. I, I love that kind of stuff. I love being challenged in a game and... Yeah, this this will be the first time in a really long time I felt truly challenged and I felt like every move I make in WoW matters, right? So so I'm very hyped for that. I'm not totally sure if I'm going to stream it just because it's a hardcore challenge, right? So I need to stay focused. But I don't know. You guys can let me know if it's like if it's something that you would want to see streamed, then, you know, I, I guess I could. Uh, no matter what, I probably will want to stream, you know, sometime this week, some content of it. But um, but I'm just not sure. Well, we'll see past that if anyone else wants to see more of it. And once again, it does start up on the 16th. Um, not sure about the time, but I, I imagine it would be when servers roll up. And, um, and yeah, so if you plan on taking part in this, I wish you good luck. And that's pretty much all I got for this week's WoW Weekly with Mist. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having fun in WoW. Maybe this, you know, maybe these events I've mentioned in today's episode is, you know, some reason for some more people to return. Uh, I'm not sure if the anniversary would really be enough for people to return. You know, because, you know, finding out amount is 1% drop chance might be, you know, might make those people think that they're happy they're gone, you know? <laughs> but maybe, maybe the hardcore classic mode might intrigue some people, maybe. And, um, and yeah. So, have a great one, guys. And we'll see you tomorrow in stream. Bye.